Welcome back to Tight Lining Maryland. It is exciting to see you again. Um, thank you for tuning back in, and this should be a good one. Uh, we're out here on the uh, the Gunpowder River. We're just fishing a stretch here to kind of do um, just a little bit of uh, you know research on the stream, uh, checking out a different part of it, and hopefully uh, finding some new places for me to go on some of the guided trips. But um, you know, if, if you want to know a little bit about the system, we're going to talk about that. If you're interested in doing a guided trip, by all means, please reach out. Or if you just want to purchase some flies for the next time you're a nymph, you can head on over to the store. So. Um, Today what we're doing is we're just trying to get as many fish in the basket as possible. We got about, I would say an hour to an hour and a half of fishing time. Um, my goal, let's try to set one to be reasonable. Let's try to catch a half dozen fish here today. Um, you know, I think it's important when you hit a stream that number one, you work on a specific technique and you really try to refine that, whether it's streamer fishing, uh, single versus double nymphing, uh, dry dropper, uh, figure out something you want to improve and go out there with a purpose um, and not just to fish. I think that'll make you a better overall angler. So, so um, today what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of single nymphing. Uh, we're going to use a CDC France fly, but let's show you a little bit about the setup. Today what we're using is I've got my Orvis Clearwater. It's a new addition to the arsenal. So far so good. I really like it. It's a lot more sensitive than what I originally thought it was going to be. Um, I will say the only knock on it is that this 10 foot 3 weight is a little heavy. Um, that's the only thing I can say that I don't quite uh, like about it, but for the price point, uh, man, this thing is super sensitive and has been absolutely incredible uh, thus far. So we have on here our mono rig. You can see it right there on the reel. Um, it's approximately 30 feet long. We've got it running all the way through our guides. And if that's something where if you haven't already made one yourself, I've got a video for that, or you could pick it up in the store uh, and buy one for yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to get right into the fishing. Um, our goal again is to catch about six fish on this single nymph. We're using a CDC France. Uh, so let's get after it and pick up a few fish for you. All righty. So now we're fishing the main SEMA current that I felt like had our best chance of getting a fish or two. Um, hopefully even more than that. I'd really like to get two or three out of this one. So we'll get our flies downstream. We'll make our little cast up. We'll get up on top as quickly as possible. We'll lead those flies, get them down in. The, the glare is a little hard right now with that sun, the way that's starting to peek through. There we go. Got one to take. Just pause just a little bit. Ah, I lost him. Let him get downstream of me. Didn't force him up. Lost fish number one. Had a chance. So we're going to let these flies swing just a little bit today since we didn't get to fish that backside. All right, so let's slide up just a little bit. We haven't really worked this inside seam. Uh, we just hooked one on the far side, uh, you know, outer part of that, that part of the riffle, so. All right, let's get a cast through the inside part now. Cast up, stay out in front, small sag. Here we go. Nice, 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 nice. All right, let's keep that guy down. Don't want to, don't want to lose him. But got to get our net ready too. All right, there we go. Fish number one. Had a second, had a chance, but lost it right in the top of the lip. Nothing to brag about, but gets our count going. That's one. CDC France fly for the win. Beautiful little gunpowder brownie. Back he goes. All right. So like we said, we would really like to pick up anywhere from two to three in this, ideally. I, I think there's many, many more, uh, but you got to be reasonable about your, your targets. You don't want to get over overindulgent and think that you're going to do something that likely you can't. Uh, but he was on the inside part of this run, which, you know, again, not necessarily the juiciest part, but you got to fish it and give yourself a chance. So
Well, I've just caught the uh, smallest brown. Let me get my hands wet for it. Smallest brown I think I've ever caught at roughly two inches. Look at this guy. As they say, let them let them go to let them grow. Holy smokes. That is a tiny, tiny brown trout. Bit nicer fish, nothing great, but he'll make three for the day to put us a little closer to our goal halfway there with a little more than halfway uh, time-wise to go. And that France fly is already out, so let's... All right, let's release this guy, fish number three, a little better. Um, what I will say about that is, is that like, if you look, we've got nothing but obstructions. I can't get a even a real good kick cast in there. So what I really had to do is I had to do like a, a wraparound helicopter uh, cast. I can hopefully demonstrate that for you. Um, I don't know how clean it's going to look off of a GoPro, but you know we'll we'll try to see what we can do. But in essence, I certainly couldn't, um, you know, do a parallel kick cast with the water load. Um, it's just, it, it, I mean, I could try from this angle, I suppose, and really get it down in and then get up on top of it and get out in front. Um, so a little bit, kind of, but really what I did is instead I took my rod and I wrapped it around my head and then just kind of sent it around in and, um, you know, it's called a helicopter cast. It's it literally just like a, a you know, uh, a wing of a helicopter just kind of shoots around your head and you you send it across the stream and you'll find that whenever you have obstructions above it can be a really useful cast to to have mastered because it might actually help you uh, pluck a fish out just like that because any other cast really wasn't working for me so I wrapped around my head I kicked it in there and we got to depth right over there right by the tree and that's where that fish was and without that cast we don't get that guy and I, I actually think we could get a little closer so I'm gonna do it again There we go. That's really tucked up on that tree. Try it again. The key is though that once you do that, you gotta adjust your rod angle and get right back out in front of it because um, otherwise you're just not gonna get that dead drift. So um, helped us pick up one extra fish. So something to think about if you're able to do that the next time you hit the stream. All right, so we're coming up on a really nice run here. Um, we might need to switch to a two fly system just because of the depth, but we'll have to play that by ear. But for now, we're gonna stay with the one. We're just gonna work on our tuck cast, getting flies to depth, staying out in front, but really, really nice opportunity here for hopefully quite a few fish. All right, so we've extended our system. Now we've got on two flies between having a heavier riffle up ahead, deeper water back here, it just made all the sense in the world. And um, I think that's gonna yield us a better potential to get these flies down to depth, but also get in contact and hopefully pick up a, an extra fish or two um, that otherwise we wouldn't have had we just stayed with a single fly. We're even have to sink the cider a little bit to get these flies down. This is a, uh, this is interesting. I don't know exactly how deep it is. I've I've actually only fished through here maybe once before, um, but I gotta assume some of these holes are upwards of three, four, maybe even five feet deep. If we're having to add on tip it a whole extra section and um, sink some cider. Ooh, that is a nice fish. Wow, I did not hook it well. <laughs> Mama, 
that was probably every bit of a 18 inch fish and he was sitting right here oh i had it what we did is we sunk our cider a solid foot foot and a half we got it down to depth with our flies and i lifted up but i didn't give it a firm hook set and uh when i lifted I thought I was on bottom and I didn't really snag it hard and that fish ran up and I should have probably popped him again. He ran me up to there and I lost him. Oh, that's heartbreaking. That's on me. Um, I really, really am thankful for the, the process of, of thinking through like, all right, you've got a deep run. You got to add on tippet. You got to add on a heavier fly. You got to sink your cider. Uh, but it's a shame that I didn't give a firm hook set because I just lost what was arguably potentially, possibly my best brown trout ever on the uh, the gunpowder because I didn't give a firm hook set. Decent fish is right on the, the drop off. Looks like we may have a double. No. Just maybe. Maybe had him foul hooked is what it is. Yep. Had him foul hooked. Probably swiped on it and missed it. But let me get this hook out for you, bud. Come on. There you go. Fish number four, right off of the ledge, though I would have rather gotten your big big friend that's in here. I'll have to remember him. Got another one of those little buckets here. We're gonna have to try to work it slow. See if we can't get it down. Find another nice fish. There we go. There's definitely a lot of fish in here. Because as soon as I pulled this guy up, about two other ones took. All right, so let's get this guy off. Sitting in here in the slow stuff. That's fish number five. All right, fish five to the net. Beautiful brownie. Let's get a couple of your buddies. They're definitely in there. Fish number six. So we hit our target goal. We probably still have 30 minutes left. We'll get this guy off. He took the rusty pheasant. Got our hands wet. Fish number six, down and gone. Um, basically, on that far, far side, um, on the inside seam right here, it's really fast. And I was having difficulty getting my flies to uh, to depth. So what I did is I basically just made uh, a little bit further than average cast, probably about 20 feet or so, uh, maybe even 25, and cast up in there, kept everything off the water, cider included, and basically just let those flies get down. And I was able to pick up a, a fish right before they hit the log that's laid down because truthfully, it's going to get pushed right into that log and uh, I would get hung up. So... You know, that's that's about as far, there we go, another one. Um, about as far as I can let that drift go before inevitably I'm, I'm getting hung up. So, fish number seven. Can't really tell what this guy took. Looks like he took the CDC France. Yep, so he took the top fly right before we hit the, uh, the tree and picked up a seventh fish, so not bad. Looks like our system's a little tangled. There we go. So sometimes with fishing two flies, especially on a double surgeon's knot, occasionally what you're gonna have to do is basically just give your flies a little tug. Um, you know, basically uh, they, they get a little over top of themselves sometimes and that tag will occasionally basically, um, it'll get a little wonky where it's not quite straight out and 
you know, sometimes it wraps around and people ask, you know, is that all right for it to wrap? Um, not really. If it's if it's wrapped lightly and it's still kind of got the free flow to it, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but every so often throughout the day, what I'll find myself doing is, so I'll take it to the most direct connection point. I'll basically give some pulls up at the top, just above where we connected originally. I'll give a direct pull where it's connected. Use, you know, again, the, the heat of my hands to get tension on that. And then I'll make one more down by where we've uh, tied in our tag fly, or excuse me, our point fly, just below that tag. So we'll send another cast over there and see if there's anything else, but two fish out of that little hole, that's, that's pretty darn good, I'll take that. Ooh, there's another take, that would have been three. So that one we got pushed through a little bit quicker than what I would have liked. There he is, fish number three. That's a nicer fish too. Gotta keep him away from that tree. We're gonna keep this guy down. The other ones I've kind of let them play me, but this guy is a little bit better fish. So ideally, I don't want him getting up top like that. That's a little late, so put him in the net. That's a nice fish, thick, 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 thick. Nice fish here. Fish number eight and a really pretty thick fish. We're gonna take a All righty, let's release that guy. There he goes, nice fish. Three fish just out of this little run right here, um, just by kind of tucking our flies up in, making sure that we get to depth. And um, right before they hit that, that down tree, you can see it over there, it runs all the way back into here. Um, you know, that's asking a lot to get somebody to get their flies down in, but uh, it's yielded quite a few fish for us using this two fly system that we knew we were gonna need just because of the, the speed of the water. You know, we made that adjustment way back there and uh, think about what that could have yielded. That, that was probably an 18 to 20 inch fish, you know. I'll say conservatively to be safe because I don't wanna be the guy that's out here measuring fish before I even get them into hand. Uh, but that was at least a 16 inch fish. I mean, when I set the hook, it didn't even move. Um, and because I didn't have a firm hook set, I lost it. But 16 to possibly even 18 to 20 inches, somewhere in that range, I think four inch range is good. And we worked up through, we picked up a couple fish and then we picked up Fish number nine or 10, forget which, but another brownie to that. Fly is already out. Nope, actually still got that rusty pheasant in there. Let's get it out for you, bud. Right in the top of the lip. And there we go, that barbless hook is out. The brownie, number nine or 10, gone. All right, let's pick up another one and try to end this day on a high note. Fish number 10. Looks like you took the tag of that uh, CDC France. Got the rusty pheasant wrapped all around him. Slow down, bud. We got you. We got you. Beautiful adipose fin, nice fish. Back he goes.
There we go. And I think that's gonna be the fish that we end on and call it a day right there because that's a nice fish. Not great, but nice. And uh, yeah, it's been productive. That's 10 or 11 fish for us. Absolutely a ton of fun. Haven't really gotten to fish much for me this year. And um, that's okay because I've had a lot of fun guiding, but uh, getting out and catching, you know, 11 or 12 fish on a local stream can uh, do a lot for your confidence and a lot for also just research. I mean, like I said, this was a stretch of, of water that I haven't really fished a ton and now I've gotten a chance and picked up a few fish here. So now I know for the next time I can come back and grab a few more. So beautiful little brown, nice way to end the day. As uh, Devin Olson and Corey from uh, Old Dominion Trout Bum would say, thank you, Mr. Brown. So that's gonna wrap it up for Tight Lining Maryland. It was an absolute blast here on the stream today. Um, I was able to record two different videos. This is uh, part two, mostly just me, you know, playing around here on the gunpowder to, to see how many fish I could pick up. And, um, you know, nothing crazy. I, I think one that was in the, the teens, Maybe the last one I got was pushing right around 10. Um, you know, heck, we even caught them as small as two inches. But uh, overall, a great and productive day on the stream. I really appreciate you tuning back in. Hopefully you picked up a tip or a trick somewhere along the way that uh, you can incorporate into the next time you edit the stream. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on a trip here soon. Uh, so tight lines and I'll catch you in the next video.